Coming in at number 10, we have the Virgin Mary lip syncing. This is absolutely insane. In 2015, parishioners at the St. Charles Church in Sydney, Australia, got a shock when they reported seeing the lips of Virgin Mary move in sync with the Lord's Prayer. For those skeptical, two churchgoers actually filmed the incident. The painting hangs above the church altar and is thought to have come from the Middle East. Footage filmed by young Catholic Christian curers was uploaded to YouTube, and I have to say, it really does look like the Virgin Virgin Mary's mouth is moving. It also looks like Christ's hand moves at one point too. Kristen spoke to the press and said, I believe it was a miracle and not just lighting because we all saw it at the same time and because her lips would start moving and then stop and then start again. Coming in at number nine, we have the anguished man. I absolutely cannot stand looking at this picture. I know that art is subjective, but I can't imagine having to look at this painting ever, let alone having it as a focal spot in my home. This painting is called The Anguished Man, and the urban legend goes that it was painted with the artist's own blood mixed with oil shortly before they killed themselves. That's right, painted in blood, then they committed suicide. Great! Once again, why would you ever hang this? The owner, Sean Robinson, was handed down the painting by his grandmother, but claims he doesn't display it because nobody likes it, and I wonder why. On the few times that he has displayed the picture, he and his family have reported strange goings on such as bangs and voices and strange smells. They even reported that the painting moves of its own accord. Trying to find proof, Sean set up a camera in his spare room and recorded the activity over the evening. This is a piece of the footage that was recorded in June 2011. That's right, there it is! Now according to Sean, the painting was at an angle and against the wall and there was no drafts present so it should not have been able to fall like that. This next one is a little bit of an urban legend, but stories are all over the internet. Coming in at number 8, we have Sonny's suicide painting. So according to urban legend, a teenage Japanese girl called Sonny drew this picture and then scanned it into her computer and uploaded it to the internet. The image reportedly had quite the effect on viewers, who said that they saw sadness in her eyes, they also saw her face change expressions after staring at her. In South Korea, the story garnered a lot of momentum and people would claim that they stared at her for longer than 5 minutes, her face would twist into a taunting smirk. According to the legend, some people who stared at the picture for longer than those five minutes were compelled to commit suicide. Now it turns out it is all just an urban legend though, and the picture is by an artist called Robert Klang. The girl in the image is a fictional character called Princess Rue. Coming in at number seven, we have the misty painting of Bernardo de Galvez. Look at this majestic fellow! This is powerful historical Spaniard Bernardo de Galvez, who was instrumental in the Spanish military in the late 1700s. The city of Galveston in Texas is named after him, as is the city hotel, Hotel Galvez. In the hotel, there is an oil painting of Bernardo that is reportedly haunted by none other than the chap himself. The painting sits at the end of the downstairs hallway and is quite the feature. Despite being a beautiful old painting, a lot of the guests at the hotel simply don't like it one bit. A lot of people have complained that they feel cold when they're near the painting, and almost all guests of the hotel will tell you that they feel Bernardo's eyes moving to watch you. It seems if you try and take a picture of the painting without asking permission of the late great Bernardo de Galvez, it will come out blurry. However, if you ask nicely, the picture will be clear. Those eyes though, I mean, they're clearly seeing you. Coming in at number 6, we have the painting of Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan. This 1885 painting by Russian realist artist Ilya Repin has been causing a stir since it was created. The painting shows a more mortally wounded Ivan being cradled by his Tsar father, who has wounded him. It is reported in history that he murdered him, although a lot of critics challenge the historical accuracy of that statement and this painting. Nonetheless, it is one of the most famous Russian classics, and it is currently in the Moscow State Tetchikov Gallery. When the painting was first unveiled, a lot of people claimed to be deeply unsettled by it. Some say they saw something terrible within the picture, other than the already terrible subject matter. In 1913, a mentally ill man slashed the painting with a knife, and it was restored by Repin himself. Once again, the painting was slashed in 2018 by a visitor to the Moscow Museum. Now he reported to be shouting that he saw terrible images moving within the picture. The man was identified as Igor Podporin, who claimed that he was overwhelmed by something. He later blamed vodka for his outburst. Coming in at number 5, we have Love Letters. Love Letters is a painting of a four-year-old girl, Samantha Houston, who was painted by Richard King in a style of a pre-existing
interesting work by Charles Trevor Garland. Samantha was the daughter of a Texan US senator who died in 1887, aged four, when she tripped and fell down a staircase as she sadly chased a ball. It seems, as a tribute, the Driscoll Hotel in Texas had a painting of her commissioned. Now this still stands there today on the fifth floor. It seems that Samantha's spirit may have imprinted on the picture as guests say that they've heard her giggling when they're nearby. Many guests report feeling like she's trying to tell them something, saying that they've seen her expression change when they look at the picture. Coming into number four, we have a moving morning portrait. Now this is a really scary video uploaded to YouTube in August 2008. Uploaded by Haunting Painting, it is called Scary Ghost Girl Painting Movements Captured and pretty accurate. The painting is of an unknown child in the 18th century and is reportedly a mourning painting, a memento mori. This basically means a painting of a person that's died and it's been commissioned in order to remember them. Now it seems that this mystery girl is haunting her own painting. The narrator of the video says that she sometimes weeps and that occasionally her mouth opens. Now this moment was captured on camera, right? Terrifying! Now a lot of people in the comment section are calling this fake but honestly I really didn't like looking at this picture while I was scripting this video. Coming into number three, we have a painting of a headless man. I am not okay with this painting. Why? Well, because at first it looks like a nice little depiction of an old station wagon. That is until you realize there's a freaking headless man hovering around in it like a decapitated creep. The artist Laura P painted this image in response to a photograph James Kidd had taken of a stagecoach stop in Tombstone, Arizona. Her finished painting was hung at an office in Arizona, but after three days, staff demanded it be returned to her. Her. Workers said that their papers would go missing and that the painting seemed to always move. They reported that despite being constantly straightened, the painting would always become crooked on the wall. Laura then took the painting back and hung it at her home. Unfortunately for her, the weird occurrences surrounding the picture followed her. She said that doors would start opening and closing on their own in the room that the painting was in and a glass even smashed in her hand right in front of the picture. Laura has expressed a desire to have the image destroyed, regretting ever creating the painting. She is worried what will happen if she does have it destroyed though. She doesn't want to anger the spirit. Coming into number two, we have The Dead Mother by Edvard Munch. Like Edvard basically just needed a hug. If you recognize his name, that's because he is the artist that was famously behind The Scream. I don't like The Scream either. I mean, it's a very, very good painting and very expressionist, but it freaks me out. However, I have to say this painting freaks me out harder. Munch's work is notoriously filled with pain and anguish, which is more likely than not down to his poor health and his difficult upbringing. His mother died when he was five, which probably explains this unsettling painting. Now the painting is called The Dead Mother and was completed in 1900. The picture is already scary to look at, but it gets even creepier when you hear what those who have owned it or worked with it have to say. Firstly, the little girl's eyes are said to incessantly follow people wherever they go, but worse still, it is said that the sheets on the dead mother's bed rustle or move. Some have even sworn that the little girl leaves the painting altogether. Coming into number one, we have the hands resisting painting. Ugh, this again. I feel like this has come up on a few top tens before and I do not like it. The hands resisting painting gained notoriety in 2000 when it sold on eBay for just over $1,000. The seller claimed it was haunted and actually, it probably is. Reportedly, three people involved with displaying the painting died, including the art dealer and the art critic who first reviewed the piece. Hands Resistim is a painting by Bill Stoneman. Now, the name is said to have come from a poem written by his wife about her husband's adoption. In the painting, a boy is seen standing next to a creepy looking doll whilst disembodied hands pour a glass panel door behind him. The painting was found abandoned in a Californian brewery, which is where it seems the couple who listed it on eBay found it. Their wife wrote, one morning our our four and a half year old daughter claimed that the children in the picture were fighting and coming into the room during the night. Now I don't believe in UFOs or Elvis being alive, but my husband was alarmed. To my amusement, he set up a motion triggered camera for the night. Now the couple claimed that the motion camera even captured the boy exiting the frame under duress from the doll. And it was also thought that the hands in the background move. I don't like this. Now the painting was bought by gallery owner Kim Smith, who shows it on request. She does so less and less these days because people keep on complaining of falling ill after viewing the picture. Since gaining notoriety for Hans Resistim, Bill Stoneman has created a prequel and a sequel image, both of which are horrifying. Well guys, this 
list as starting us off at number 10 is Madame La Lorie. Honestly, this hoe finds herself in every video, I swear to God. But anyway, we should all know who she is by now, the New Orleans socialite that tortured and mutilated almost all of her slaves. Well, long after Delphine fed her mansion on Royal Street, sometime in the 70s, major renovations were underway to turn it into luxury apartments. In 1997, the new owners thought it would be a great idea to get a portrait made of Madame La Lorie because she was such a wonderful person, why not remember her forever? Not. Once the painting was placed inside the building, everything started going wrong. Many believe a certain darkness attached itself to the painting, or perhaps it was the dark soul of the woman herself. The painting would move on the wall by itself, it would rock so much that the canvas would free itself from the frame. People living there said they felt unnerved any time they were near the portrait, and almost all of them used to hear echoes of voices, cold touches on their skin, and the smell of smoke. Just a side note, the reason Madame Lalaurie fled is because her mansion had a huge house fire, so that's where the smell of smoke makes sense here. Residents had items go missing, one even said the painting talked to her and footsteps would follow her around her apartment. Clothes would get bundled in the fireplace but not burn, carpenters would see a grey lady appear out of nowhere. After countless paranormal reports, the owners finally returned the portrait to the original artist. Coming in at number 9 is Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan. Painted in 1885 by Ilya Repin, a Russian realist painter, he was known as a mystical artist and honestly I'd say a hella cursed artist, not mystical. After painting the piece, Ilya was constantly tired and his right arm couldn't paint anymore. He fell into deep depression, but he had to learn how to paint with his left hand instead. Just to clarify, the painting itself depicts fiction, the scene never took place. Russian icon painter Abram Balashov saw the painting for the first time and launched into a hysterical frenzy. He cut the painting with a knife multiple times, saying stop the bloodshed, and afterwards he was admitted to a psychiatric hospital, despite having no signs of a mental illness before looking at the picture. But the curse isn't just tied to the painting, it's tied to Ilya himself. His subjects are said to die after he paints them, take the barge haulers on the Volga. Many healthy men in that painting all died after it was completed. Other subjects like Mussorgsky, Pirogov, actor Mercy Dars, Hanto, all died after being painted as well. That's just way too many people to be a coincidence, I feel like it's 100% not. The artist himself ended up dying after doing a painting called A Man With An Evil Eye, which was of his cousin who was a known wizard in his town. It's said he died because of his relative. At number 8 we have the suicide girl. The artist of this painting is unknown, but she was a Korean teenager living in Japan. It's said she drew the picture and posted it online shortly before committing suicide. When the story broke out, it spread like wildfire and hundreds of Korean forums started saying the picture was cursed by the soul of the artist. The blue eyes of the girl draw you in and within them you see this sadness. Some say the artist herself had so much sadness it cursed the picture, and others say she painted her sadness into the painting and that's why it evokes sadness in whoever's looking at it. But no matter what, no one can stare into her eyes for more than 5 minutes. There have been reports of people having committed suicide after doing so, and honestly even me looking at it online, there was something about her eyes that just drew me in. Maybe it was just me being psychological, I don't know. Others also say the picture changes as you look at it and that her eye bags get darker or her lips curve into a taunting smile. Filling our number 7 slot is Mrs. Bell. Now that's not the real name of the painting, but it was painted by Cyril. Roberts. The story goes that Heel House, the mansion belonging to Alan Smith, was plagued with the sightings of a pale Edwardian figure accompanied by the music of Chopin. Anyone who unfortunately witnessed her ran for the hills because seeing a ghost is bad enough, but seeing one with an eerie soundtrack is even worse. Many people saw her floating around surrounded by a blue haze. At points she would just be standing at the foot of Alan's bed. Weirdly enough, the owner of a local junk shop approached Alan saying she had something for him that should be returned to its rightful home. When he looked at what she had given him, he recognized it straight away. It was a portrait of a woman playing the piano which basically matched the apparition he had seen around his home. After doing some research, he found that Mrs. Bell was the wife of an Argentine beef rancher and they both lived in one of the bedrooms at Hill House in the early 1900s. She was a very cultured woman but tragedy hit her when she went bankrupt and was forced to sell all her possessions including the portrait. But now that the portrait is back in the house, the curse and the haunting has stopped altogether and they lived happily ever after. The end. End of video. Now at number 6 is The Unknown Painting. While the title is unknown, the artist is the famous Yuko Tatushima. Yuko is an artist and performer, yet her talents lend themselves quite well to paranormal and supernatural purposes. Most of her work is provocative and just quite unsettling to look at. The particular picture I'm talking about depicts a black and red scratched background with a woman, I mean I want to say woman but really it's more of a thing in the 
middle. The eyes are massive, they're not human like, and its neck is quite long. I mean, there's nothing really sinister about the painting despite it being creepy. And I mean, the thing, I mean, the thing is smiling, right? I mean, there's that. But I don't know if that's a smiling through the pain smile or I'm gonna kill you smile. The painting is quite cursed, and that's also a well known fact. It's meant to induce feelings of suicide on those who look at it. Coming in at number five is the Lady Ossington. Viscountess Ossington built the coffee palace located on Beast Market Hill back in 1882. She built it for the good of society, and it was aimed at travellers who wanted a place to stay without the temptation of alcohol on the premise. Lady Ossington managed the establishment till her death and was meant to be succeeded by her. Her trustees who would continue her crusade against the demon drink. Honestly, I feel like she probably got way too drunk one night and was like, I'm never drinking again. Ended up being the only person in the world ever actually sticking to that. But anyway, moving on, by the 60s, a court decided the coffee palace wasn't as charitable as advertised since Lazy Ossington's heirs were the real beneficiaries of the coffee palace, so they were like, that's not on, and sold the place. Inside the coffee palace, however, hung an oil portrait of Lady Ossington herself, which many believe is cursed and haunted haunted by the woman. It's said that after the place was sold, the portrait started flying off the wall, mimicking Lady Ossington's disgust over what happened to her business. At number 4 is Pogo the Clown. John Wayne Gacy, the serial killer and rapist who himself dressed up as clowns and performed at events and children's parties, painted this piece while he was on death row. People even called him Pogo the Clown, so many people believe his spirit still haunts the painting because bad things have happened to every single person that owned it. Musician Nicky Stone bought the painting but got rid of it nearly just as fast because after it entered his house, his dog died and his mother was diagnosed with cancer. I mean, it could purely be coincidental, but it could also totally not be. Even Johnny Depp bought the painting but somehow contracted a severe pathological phobia of clowns and ditched the painting as well. May I just add, why would you want to buy the painting done by a serial killer anyway? Why, why, why even bring that into your house? There's no need. There's no need. Filling at number three slot is Roque B. Venus. Painted by Diego Velasquez between 16 and 1651, the painting shows the goddess Venus lying on a settee with her bare body back to us. She's looking into a mirror held by her son Cupid. Despite the photo being well lit, the reflection of Venus in the mirror is dark and troubled and she looks super pale. Paler than herself, not her reflection if that makes sense. Most of the owners of the painting were killed or became majorly in debt. It never stayed at a museum for too long and it just hopped from place to place. The worst incident was in March of 1914 when Mary Richardson attacked the painting with a meat cleaver, leaving extremely deep damaging rips all across her neck and back. Despite claiming it was a statement on behalf of the suffragette movement, many debate that and think the painting itself caused something inside of her to snap. Now at number 2 is the witch girl. This portrait of a young girl came from Casa de Green and was bought by a Spanish father who saw it and was instantly mesmerized by it, saying he couldn't take his eyes off her and the girl couldn't take her eyes off him either. Literally, she literally couldn't take her eyes off him. He even claimed the eyes of the girl followed him around the room until he gave in and bought her. When he finally brought the painting home, he found that at night he always found a grey silhouette on the side of the canvas. It was almost guarding the painting. Many believe the painting could have possibly belonged to Madame Laloy and that she was one of her slaves. The grey figure in front of the painting is the girl from the picture protecting herself from any other atrocities regardless of her being dead or alive. Because honestly, let's face it, if she was Madame Laloy's slave in real life, that was an atrocity in and of itself. The father who bought the painting titled at the witch girl because her tears are falling at the exact same rate, which was too outlandish and otherworldly for him to conceive of, so he assumed she must have been a witch. And finally, at number one is The Faceless Women. Again, that's not the title of the painting, I just gave it the title based on what it is, but it was painted by Carrigan. Carrigan's an online user of Feasters who mostly paints pieces involving Yuri style bondigado, which is basically just a fancy term that means lesbian bondage. Now, the painting depicts four girls a blonde girl in the middle with rope around her mouth and decolletage, and surrounding her are three other girls, with the one right behind her having her hand on the middle girl's head, whilst the other two on either side of her have one hand each on the middle girl's neck. Kind of like a power move. But the creepy thing about the three women is that they have no faces. They have black hollows for eyes, but then no nose, no mouth, no nothing. It's like they're all wearing white masks almost. Carrigan made up a fictional story to go along with the painting, but many say they simply can't stand looking at it. There's something unnerving about it that irks everyone who sees it, which really makes no sense because it's not even based on a real person. I mean, there's no spirit or soul cursing it, and yet it's cursed. The artists themselves said they had trouble finishing the piece, citing feelings of anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and paranoia. But hey, at least you did it in the end. Starting off this countdown, we 
have the stagecoach painting. So this painting has a very dark and twisted backstory. So no wonder it's cursed. So in 1994, a photographer named James Kidd took a bunch of photos of stagecoaches in Tombstone, Arizona. However, upon developing the photos, he realized he captured a ghost of a headless man. And then a painter thought it would be a good idea to recreate this photo as an oil painting. So she painted this headless ghost man and the ghost attached itself to the painting. Like seriously, what did she expect? So when the painting was complete, it was hung at a business. But a couple of days later, the business demanded that she take it back. Apparently, the painting was found crooked every morning, despite them constantly fixing it. They also blamed the painting for paperwork going missing and appointments getting messed up. The painting was just bringing them bad luck. So the painter brought it back to her home and she started experiencing bad luck. Her garage roof started leaking, but roofers couldn't find the source of the leak. And when the painting was moved, the leak stopped. That's what you get for painting a photo of a ghost. Wow, what a creepy painting. Let's move on to number nine with the Pyramid of Skulls. Before I go any further, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. So the Pyramid of Skulls is just as it sounds. It's a painting of a bunch of skulls on top of each other. It was completed by painter Paul Cezanne. Now here's where it gets creepy. As Paul started getting older, he became fascinated by death. So from 1898 up until his death, all he would paint are these creepy paintings filled with skulls. This particular piece apparently emphasizes the fact that you need to confront death and reflect on it. Not only that, but his genre of painting is called Memento Mori, which translates into remember that you have to die. So if that isn't creepy, then I don't know what is. Moving on to number eight, we have the Raft of Medusa. The Raft of Medusa was created by Theodore Garrico back in 1819. The painting depicts the real life shipwreck of the French naval Frigette Meduse. On July 5th, 1816, 147 men set sail on this raft. Only 15 managed to survive. But those that did survive turned to cannibalism after being severely starved. Just knowing that backstory makes the painting way darker than it already is. Back to you, Brie. All right, in the number seven, we have the Japanese girl drawing. This is another painting with a very dark backstory. So legend goes that a Japanese student was found dead in her room. This was the last image that she had drawn before taking her own life. In fact, she scanned this image and posted it online for everyone to see. But legend goes if you stare into this girl's eyes too long, then she will get you to take your own life as well. Some who have stared at it for a while have claimed that the portrait turns evil. The girl gets an evil looking smirk on her face and dark circles appear under her eyes. If that's what evil looks like, then I guess I'm evil because I look like that in the morning. <laughs> Making our way down the list, number six, we have the Mona Lisa. Now I know what you're thinking. Lindsay, how is this painting scary? Well, it's not, but its backstory certainly is. So there's this famous urban legend surrounding the Mona Lisa. Apparently, a French artist took his life because he was driven mad by the mystery of the Mona Lisa's smile. French artist's name was Luc Mapereau. On June 23rd, 1852, he threw himself from the fourth floor of his Paris hotel. Later, a note was found in his room that read, and I quote, For years, I have grappled desperately with Mona Lisa's smile. I prefer to die. Sadly, that's all we know about this case and Luke. It was featured in a 1999 Smithsonian article and in a book from 1966. It's a pretty creepy case. And now I will never be able to look at the Mona Lisa the same. Coming in at number five, we have the Weeping Children. The Weeping Children are a collection of paintings created by a man named Giovanni Bragolin. Every painting features a little boy or girl crying. Now it's said whoever owns these paintings will face tragedy. So in this case, all of Giovanni's paintings are cursed. In fact, a string of house fires were all thought to have been caused by this painting. All of the houses that caught on fire were completely destroyed except for the paintings that remained perfectly undamaged. Take the case of Roy and May Hall. This couple owned one of these paintings. Their house unexpectedly caught fire and they almost lost everything, except for the painting of a crying boy that wasn't even blackened by smoke. Yeah, I've heard of those paintings before. It's super freaking creepy. Okay, and at number four, we have Zidzla Bukowski. Look, I know I said his name wrong. Okay, I know I butchered it. 
just move on from it. Now this dude has created a number of creepy looking paintings. But the scariest one is this one right here. It features this weird creature crawling with a bloody wrap on its head. Honestly, it really creeps me out. To make matters worse, apparently this painting is cursed. And if you see it three different times, then you'll die. Yeah, so we all just saw the image once, two more times and bye bye. Okay, I mean, there's no proof that this legend is real. But still, I never wanna see that painting in my life ever again. I agree, I never want to see that painting again. Okay, moving on to number three, we have the collage of art balls. Here is another painting that can kill. So this painting is associated with a Japanese urban legend. Legend goes that if you look at this painting five times, then you will die. A little death note, but Whatever. I mean, hey, at least it's five times and not three like the other painting Lindsay mentioned. Besides that, not a lot of people know much about this painting. It was painted in 2010, but we don't know by whom. And we don't know why it's cursed either. I mean, it's just a painting of a ball. And at number two, we have Watson and the Shark. This painting is a depiction of a real life tragedy. It was created by John Singleton Copley in 1778. Basically, back in 1749 in Havana, Cuba, a visitor on the royal consort was the victim of a brutal shark attack. He lost his leg in the attack and was badly injured. But thankfully, he was rescued. This painting depicts just that which is very dark. And finally, in at number one, we have Man Proposes, God Disposes. This painting was created by Edwin Landseer in 1864. It depicts Sir John Franklin's ill-fated expedition in 1845. This painting is how Edwin imagined their fate would be. But little did he know that he created an extremely cursed painting. So this painting is hung up in the exam hall at the Royal Holloway University of London. Rumor has it that in the 1970s, a student took his own life after staring at the painting while taking his exam. All he left behind was a note on his exam paper that read, the polar bears made me do it. 